back, Wrestle Random. It's two Wrestle Random edition number 86. I am, of course, your host, per usual, Bleach Report, Future Commons, Level 3, Graham G.S. and Matthews, here today to give my predictions and picks for this upcoming Sunday's WWE Hell in the Cell pay per view event. Looks like a great show on paper. Um, hopefully, it lives up to the hype. We have the WWE Championship match surrounded with controversy, same thing with the World Heavyweight Championship match, and a, plenty, and a handful of other very good matches on the card as well. So, let's start breaking it down to kick off my re prediction card for this Sunday's event. Hell No versus Team Road Scholars, the WWE Tag Team Championships. This match has been somewhat brewing for quite a while now. Um, Road Scholars just won the Tag Team Tournament, which I absolutely love the concept of building up over the last month. They just won the tournament this past Monday night by defeating Rey Mysterio and Zankara to crown the contendership for the WWE Tag Team titles at Hell in a Cell. Now, Team Hell No has been on a roll since they captured the championships at Night of Champions last month. They've been great champions, bringing back relevancy to the titles, defending those titles. In the main events of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown for the first time in years. So I was really happy to see that. Um, and Road Scholars is a beautiful team as well. Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow, sure, they're breakout single stars at some point. But for right now, they're not being given anything to do as singles competitors in the mid-card division. So why does not why, why does, why, might, might as well just throw them in the uh, tag team division? You know, they have great chemistry, great gimmicks, very similar styles. And I love what they've been doing with them over the last month and a half. So it looks like it's going to be a great match on paper. We saw a preview of this a couple of weeks ago on SmackDown. Um, although it ended in disqualification, it only lasted a few minutes. So it wasn't a full-blown matchup. Thankfully, they were saving it for this pay-per-view. Of course, they're going to have to go with Team Hell No retaining the championships here. But don't get me wrong. I'd love to see the title feud continue, the title chase continue um, between Road Scholars and Team Hell No. And they have a lot of potential. It really helped build up this feud on Raw this past week. So I was glad to see that. But I'm going to have to go with Team Hell No retaining the WWE Tag Team Championships on Sunday. Up next, Alberta Del Rio versus Randy Orton, a feud that's been kind of overlooked in recent weeks. Um, a fresh feud, in my personal opinion. I've been calling for this for months now since WrestleMania or early 2012. Thankfully, we're finally getting it. We've seen um, on both Raw and SmackDown in the past what these guys are capable of in singles matches. So I'm really looking forward to this match on Sunday. Orton hasn't been exciting me all that much since he came back from suspension. Del Rio hasn't really been – he's been doing pretty much the same thing since he came back the night after WrestleMania earlier this year. Haven't really been invested in either guy since this feud. Orton, he's doing okay in this feud. He's been taking a lot more time off to, to film his movie, so I'm glad about that. And he's been looking um, you know, more vulnerable as of late with losses to Del Rio and Big Show in clean in, in singles action, so I was glad to see that. And Alberto Del Rio has been uh, showing more personality in this feud with Randy Orton by doing you know, the, the signature, I, you can't really see in the camera view, but the, the signature Apex Predator Randy Orton pose that he's been doing since his Legend Killer days. So I'm glad to see that as well. This could be a great matchup. Could go either way. Randy Orton doesn't really need the win. Neither does Del Rio. Del Rio just came off um, weeks of losing, or I'm sorry, months of losing the World Heavyweight Champion Sheamus. So I would call for him to go for the victory here, but of course Randy Orton has been... Um, made to look weak against Dario, while Dario has been built up, uh, has been built up as a, an aggressive monster over the last month. Maybe not really more so a monster, but he's been looking more intense, more aggressive, more physical in recent weeks with uh, victories over Brodus Clay, Zack Ryder, and many, many, I'm sorry, many, many others on both Raw and SmackDown. So I'm glad with Dario's build up. I'm happy with it. I'm satisfied with it. Orton, he could do better, but even still, he's doing pretty well in this dude as well. So I'm gonna have to go with Randy Orton for the victory here after a great matchup. Up next, this match is going to be um, it's going to be announced on tonight's SmackDown, so free spoiler alert. It's a minor spoiler alert, so you're not being spoiled all that much. I know I hate spoilers. I don't read SmackDown spoilers, but I did read um, accidentally that this match would be happening at the pay-per-view. But nonetheless, it's a triple threat match for the Divas Championship. Evil will be defending against both Layla and Caitlyn for the Divas Championship. Both former, I'm sorry, Layla's a former Divas Champion. Caitlyn, not so much. Now, Caitlyn was supposed to get her shot in Night of Champions. However, she was attacked by person in a blonde wig, presumably to be Eve, obviously, uh, only to, um, you know, for only for Eve to replace her in her match against Layla. Eve won the Divas Championship, and they've had a feud going on in recent weeks. The best part about this feud was the cat fight that we saw backstage earlier on Monday night this past week, this past week on Raw, so that was awesome. Um, so this feud has potential, at least as a storyline. I know it's basic, it's simple, it's effective, it's, it's predictable, but um, it's logical, and they at least are being given the storyline. That's all i got to say about this feud. Could be a great match. Both Eve and Layla are good workers. Caitlyn's been, um, you know, being brought to good matches with both Layla and Eve. So I'm hoping that this feud does not disappoint, or this match doesn't disappoint. It, it, it very well could, but I'm not. My expectations for this match aren't high. But um, Eve could very well retain the championship here, and I'm gonna have to go with Eve 
still your Divas Champion with Caitlyn moving into a feud with Eve in a singles competition, you know, in a singles feud, obviously, excluding Layla going into the Survivor Series pay-per-view in a couple more weeks. Now in our semi-main events here, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between The Miz and Kofi Kingston. Now, as I've said in past videos, Miz versus Kofi Kingston is a great feud. I know we saw it back in 2009. I didn't really want to see it again, personally. But nonetheless, they produce great matches, as seen by their match on main event last week for the Intercontinental Championship, which saw Kofi Kingston win his fourth Intercontinental Championship. Now, I think Miz, there's a possibility that he could win back the Intercontinental Championship here. Um, if you recall, I've been making this analogy for days now, but um, if you recall back in April when Cody Rhodes was battling Big Show with the Intercontinental Championship and after he lost the title at WrestleMania, he lost almost every single match that he competed in until from WrestleMania to the Extreme Rules pay-per-view where he shockingly won back the Intercontinental Championship. They could do, do something similar to that with Miz. I mean, they had him being squashed by Ryback on Monday night. They had him lose to Kofi Kingston two or three times. They had him lose to Randy Orton last week on SmackDown. He's a great worker. They just botched Miz's return from Money in the Bank. He looked great. He had a great look, great mic skills, refreshed character. They gave him the, the Intercontinental Championship, which he very well deserved to become a Triple Crown Champion for the first time in his career. But they botched the run by having him lose almost every single non-title match he was involved in. So, with that being said, Kofi Kingston logically should go over here, and I'm going to have to go with Kofi Kingston, still your Intercontinental Champion. But I would love to see Miz regain the belt, since there's more challengers for him to challenge the Miz for the Intercontinental Championship rather than Kofi Kingston. But another hell bent on pushing Kofi Kingston as a single star at the moment. So I'm going to have to go with Kofi Kingston, still your Intercontinental Champion, after Sunday's Hell in a Cell pay per view event. Up next, now into our main events, the World's Heavyweight Championship match for the first time ever. Sheamus will battle the Big Show for the world title. Um, also, in, inside, in, not inside Hell in a Cell, I'm sorry. Um, there was a lot of speculation going on about that. Um, I know when it was first announced, I thought it was going to be inside Hell in a Cell, the match. The, the World Heavyweight Championship match at the Hell in a Cell event in recent years has always been taking place inside Hell in a Cell. And I know the Hell in a Cell, the matches that take place inside it in recent years from 2009 on, don't really warrant the Hell in a Cell stipulation, um, except for the one at WrestleMania this past year, WrestleMania 28 between Triple H and Undertaker. That was understandable. But at the pay-per-view itself, a lot of these matches don't need the Hell in a Cell, and I can understand why. Um, they're just random matches. Big Show versus Sheamus is a few that just got started. Why would they need the Hell in a Cell? Same with Steam Punk and Ryback. I'll get to that in a few minutes. But um, even still, it's a first-time ever match. It's fresh. I know people were complaining, myself included, about Del Rio getting multiple title shots. So at least we see someone fresh in the World Heavyweight Championship scene. Um, Sheamus and Show, the feud hasn't been built up all. It hasn't been built up that well, actually. I'm accident. What the hell am I saying? That actually, I mean, uh, Big Show has been made to look like a coward in recent weeks with the whole 45 second shit, and that very could well be building towards Big Show's ultimate title win at Hell in a Cell by beating Sheamus, presumably via dirty tactics. Only for Dolph Ziggler to cash in and win the World Heavyweight Championship via Money in the Bank briefcase. Now, that is the most logical prediction. I've been making that for weeks. Everyone's making that prediction. And, of course, anything that's logical, WWE will botch. So, that being said, I don't think Big Show wins the World Heavyweight Championship here. I don't think they're going to make Sheamus lose his 200-plus day reign as world champion to Big Show. So, they're probably going to have Sheamus go over here and retain this, the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Do I think Dolph Ziggler is going to walk out as World Heavyweight Champion? Probably not. Maybe he's going to attempt to cash in, but I don't think he's going to successfully do it. If he does, I'm going to mark the hell out. I love Dolph Ziggler. It's about damn time that he is a World Heavyweight Champion. But I don't see that happening this past mo this upcoming Monday night. Uh, I'm sorry, this upcoming Sunday night at Hell in Cell. So I'm going to have to go with Sheamus retaining here and Dolph Ziggler attempting to cash in Money in the Bank. Either he goes in and he gets attacked by Sheamus and it doesn't happen like we saw Money in the Bank. Or we have Sheamus cash, or I'm sorry, Sheamus, Sheamus retain the World Championship. Only for Dolph Ziggler to come in, cash in, and lose with the internet, subsequently exploding. And I wouldn't be too surprised if that happened. I, I will be extremely pissed, but I won't be surprised if that happens. Main event time. The birthday boy, WWE Champion CM Punk. And, of course, today is CM Punk's birthday, October 6, 26, 2012. His 35th, 4th birthday, I believe. I think, it's his, I think he's born in 1978. But um, happy birthday to the WWE Champion, the Mr. Best in the World, CM Punk. And he was going to get his birthday wish this Sunday when he enters Hell in a Cell against Ryback for the WWE Championship. And of course, this is a match that everybody's talking about going into the event. Ryback hasn't been defeated since he came back the night after uh, WrestleMania 28, or I should say the SmackDown after WrestleMania 28. CM Punk has been WWE Champion for 330, what was it, 38 days, I want to say. I can't pinpoint it exactly, but it's over. it's been over 330 days that he's been WWE Champion since last year's Survivor Series event. He's been a great WWE Champion, regardless of what some have said. He's been a great heel in the recent weeks, or recent months, I should say, since turning heel back around 1,000. 
So this feud has potential. I think it's being a little rushed. I would love, love to see this at the TLC pay-per-view. Right now, not so much. Of course, I understand it's because John Cena's injury. He wasn't 100% when they made the match. So they had to put Ryback in instead. I understand that. Should Ryback become WWE Champion here? Absolutely not, especially with the um, you know, Rock contending for the title at Royal Rumble. Of course, Ryback could very well lose it in the next night on Raw or uh, the Survivor Series pay-per-view or TLC. But I think it's going to mess up the plans because, of course, I don't think they're going to give away Cena versus Rock at a Royal Rumble pay-per-view. More than likely, they will be going with Punk versus Rock. That makes the most sense at this point. So Punk has to be champion going into the event. As I read today in a report, I don't think it's going to be as meaningful if CM Punk would lose a championship along the way to Royal Rumble and then win it back only for Rock to take it from him. That wouldn't make much sense. They were, I thought they were going to do something similar to that with Bobby Roode. Remember when he was going to go on that year-long World Heavyweight Championship run with James Storm and the feud with all that stuff? They cut it short, and I was glad Bobby, do, Bobby Roode didn't retain the title. I'm sorry, regain the title. If he was James Storm, because that would have taken him legitimately away from the World Heavyweight Championship. So, with that being said, I don't want CM Punk to lose here. I don't want Ryback to lose here. As most of you know, I've been a Skip Sheffield Mark since his NXT days back in February 2010. So, I am a, I am the biggest supporter for this guy, Ryan Reeves. He's a great, dedicated worker. He's been in the industry for about, since 2004, I believe. Way back than you would think. But, um, even still, it looks like a good match. As I said in my Raw event review from this past week, um, they had a pretty good match in the Raw event that I attended, so I'm expecting a good match here. It's going to be Ryback's probably his longest match of his WWE career up to this point. So I'm really looking forward to this matchup. It has a variety of outcomes, and all of it. that's the whole controversy around this matchup. How is this matchup going to end? I can very well see Ryback winning the championship here, quite honestly. Um, after the 2.4 rating that Raw got this past week, their lowest rating since 2000, I'm sorry, since 1997, the last 15 years, non-holiday episode that is, um, I could see them trying to change it up, trying to shock the world by having Ryback win the WWE Championship. And other than me, Vince McMahon is Ryback's biggest supporter, so I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. I will mark out either way if Ryback wins, if Punk wins. I'm going to be marking out either way because I love both guys. Mr. Best in the World, CM Punk. I mean, he's been champion for almost 11 months now. I would love to see him um, you know, surpass John Cena's reign from 2007. And that would have to mean that he would have to retain the championship up until... I think December, so you have to retain it here tonight, or at Hell in the Cell, I should say, and at Survivor Series. So hopefully that happens as well. That's going to be awesome. But um, even still, I am really, really looking forward to this matchup. Who do I think is going to win? Are they, they going to have Brock Lesnar come back? Probably not, because if Brock Lesnar came back, then they'd have to have him on Raw, then they'd have to have him in Survivor Series, which I'd love to see, but they that would that would mean that they'd have to take away dates from his contract, very limited dates going into the WrestleMania season. So I don't see that happening. Um, they could do something similar to the vet, last year's Vengeance pay-per-view when they had their Mark Henry Big Show matchup. Um, when they had the suplex through the ring and ended in no contest. Am I saying Ryback's going to suplex CM Punk through the ring and break the ring? Probably not. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that they could do something similar to that where maybe CM Punk or Ryback tosses or spears Punk through the um, the cell. I mean, not to make comparisons to Goldberg or anything, but to make it to go to a no contest. But um, I think CM Punk will retain here one way or another, not with help of Brock Lesnar. I think that would be fucking awesome if Brock Lesnar came back, but I just don't see it happening given these limited dates. So I'm going to have to go CM Punk still WWE Champion. If they break Ryback's streak, it would be a huge mistake. If they break Punk's streak, huge mistake. They're Ryback. See what I did there? Um, themselves into a corner with this matchup inside Hell in a Cell. So it's probably going to go to a, go to a no contest in some form or fashion. Of course, I expect John Cena to get involved some way, somehow, which I think is the best bet at this point since he wasn't he, – he's going to be on the pre-show from what I believe, but other than that, he's not, being, he's not really confirming the card, which I think is a mistake because he's one of their biggest draws. So with all that being said, I'm really looking forward to Hell in a Cell this upcoming Sunday, the most anticipated I've been for a Hell in a Cell event since it originated back in 2009. So I'm really, really looking forward to the show. Hopefully you guys are as well. Make sure to hit up your predictions on me on Twitter, at the Immortal Sports on the SM. I'm going to have a Hell in a Cell predictions article up on Bleach Report this upcoming Sunday morning, so make sure to check that out. Make sure to subscribe as well for all my other videos. Make sure to check out my channel for all my other videos, including Raw Reviews, SmackDown Reviews, other pay-per-view reviews and other stuff like that, and dance videos, of course. So thanks, guys, for watching. Enjoy your weekend. This is GSM signing out. Till next time, guys.